Hey, what's up guys, The Blix here again, welcome back to Men of War Assault Squad 2 and Rob's Realism Mod. This is part 1 of 2, featuring some beautiful maps created by Grumpy Kid and Ace. Both of the maps that you will see in this mini-series are available over on the Steam Workshop, however the battles have been created by me. So this is part 1, we are here on the outskirts of Dunkirk, the beach is only a few clicks um, north of here so to speak. Um, and uh, the second map will feature the Bray Dunes, which was the far northeastern area of the, the, the Dunkirk area, so to speak. So I am very excited to see what we're going to see today. Um, and what are we going to see today? Well, it is indeed a battle here in the outskirts of Dunkirk. Uh, we have two British rifle platoons set up with some mortar and AT support. And what they're doing is simply trying to hold back the German advance. They're trying to give their fellow comrades uh, by the beaches more time to evacuate. And as you can tell, they've been heavily shelled here. Lots of airplane bombardments and other things that have gone down. But they're they're dug in and they're going to hold out as, as long as possible or until they get the call to pull back. It's your time to evacuate. Unfortunately, that is probably a very unlikely situation currently as uh, Operation Dynamo or the... Um, the fleet is, is meant to be kept back to defend Britain for the, the battle that's about to come. So in, in many ways, the... Wow. Have you seen the Dunkirk, the movie? I don't think I need to explain it. Or you can read up on the, the situation itself online, of course. But um, anyway, ooh, this is a very nice map, as you can tell. It's a little packed with objects. So we're getting uh, a slightly lower FPS. I think I'll have to stop moving around so much later on during the battle itself, just so that we can get... A better idea of what's happening without losing frames. Uh, I'm gonna swap into the player HUD here and we can take a look at the British defenses today. We'll mark them in blue. And what we have here is a pretty standard battle line. We've got a flanking protection here to the left. We've got a center with two lines in case the right or left falls. We have a pretty sharp and firm right flank here um, with a uh, with the trench position marking the far right flank that can defend itself from pretty much all directions. Uh, backed up by a mortar a little further behind. Probably won't be the target instantly since it's not going to be spotted. And then we have that line to the right here in case that bunker position falls. We've got a center line and a reserve line behind that center line in case they do uh, break. And over here on the left side we've got a, a, some pretty good entrenched positions near the sandbags and whatnot. So the Germans are going to be attacking them. The, uh, the Brits will do their best to hold out. Um, at one stage, they might retreat back to the beach, but we'll see how much pressure they can take. Otherwise, they will defend their positions to the very last man, uh, and they'll be doing their comrades further back down the line there, a, a pretty big solid, so to speak, by, by giving their lives for the, the greater cause there. Um, very I mean, have you seen the movie? I, I've asked you now that second time, but it's a, I, I personally liked it. You have to go in with the idea that it's a very historical war movie, uh, not that it's an action-packed um story it, it's a war movie not a story i'd say but it i mean it does pack a lot of story depending on what you appreciate in movies and whatnot but without further ado we're gonna remove that mini map we're gonna swap out of the british player and the german one of course as well and we're gonna enjoy a pretty decent battle here or so i do believe and it'll be quite exciting to see how the brits can do it overall it's also just enjoying a very beautiful map all right so without further ado let's hit that start button And let's get straight into the battle. So we can hear some German vehicles coming down the road here, where a British convoy has previously been destroyed by plenty of air raids and whatnot. Absolutely disastrous. You can see all the smoke and wreckage around here. Chaos indeed. It's a German BTR moving in. Oh, the road is a little stuffed. So it's going to go around. And the second BTR following up. They must have been spotted by the British defenders by now, but the Germans scouting the area out. Do, li oh, holy shit. No little of the resistance they're about to meet. So once again, we're talking days and days of bombardments and air raids. They've just shelled this area completely uh, and dropped the bombs on it, of course, as well. So they're sending in some reconnaissance forces to scout out the British position to see if anyone's uh, anyone's alive or if they've retreated. And it doesn't look like the Brits are going back at all. They're holding their ground. Firmly, I must say. 
So we've got the good old 1940s equipment here. Lee Enfields and Bren guns for the uh, Brits. MP40s, MG39s, and uh, K98s for the attacking Germans. So they were more, they were quicker to get the uh, machine pistol into the game, um, or a submachine gun into the, not the game, but you know. Well, a, a war in, is in many ways a game, you win or lose, but um, to get the, uh, and that's gonna, that sounds rather horrific, so don't like, don't take that as literal as I just said it. But um, they were quick, quicker to get it into the war in the fight than the Brits were with their Sten gun, so. Um, then again, rifles. Um, less ammunition spent, more accurate fire. But of course, in a machine pistol or submachine gun is very handy in several situations, um, where it can give you a very big advantage. So, um, mortars are laying it on to the Germans who are not right now kind of stopped. One of the half tracks have been destroyed. The other one has come to a halt. Might have taken some. They might. They're probably just taking cover now. I do think all the infantry that dismounted are dead. No, there's a few screaming around here, so they're taken cover by some of the... Yeah, there's there's one right here. Nicely hidden away. There's several. Look, they're in a little group formation along the tree line here. And there's a Gruppenführer over here. So a squad leader. Mortars are still trying to pin them now. British casualties should be minimal over here on this side. But a German infantry assault has commenced over on this side. And they've already started knocking down some of the Brits here on the front line. So, they're limited in numbers and they have a pretty wide combat with, which means a lot of gaps and the, the Germans are going to be able to bring up more firepower to the front. This officer is still trying to spot for, the, for his comrades, but he probably doesn't realize they're all dead. This, this machine gun position has been knocked out as well, so that's most of that front line. Uh, here on the left side, they're doing a little healthier. Well, that's nice to see. I wonder how many Germans are attacking. They're kind of nicely spread out here around the bushes and whatnot. So this terrain is... It's excellent for some balanced combat of the kind we're currently seeing. Another uh, platoon is being sent in. Ein Zug. Oh, shit! That was a good volley, probably by an MG39. It ripped up two of the defenders there, who caught, like, a burst of bullets, and they were killed almost instantly and in succession. Getting better frames now, a lot better than I suspected, or expected rather. Um, we're, we're struggling there a little bit towards the intro, but then again, as soon as you pan the camera in different angles, you'll you'll experience a very different different experience. Now look at all these 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 empty trenches. There simply aren't enough Brits to cover them. We do have a section here. They'd rather fight a little more tight, uh, sort of shoulder to shoulder, um, to be able to communicate better instead of spreading out too much. So we do have a group that's very active over here, and then we have a few more later down the line here. So that's just a, a rifle squad that's split up into two sections. Um, two fire teams, so to speak. This firm trench is still holding, but right now, since the first British line of defense up here has more or less fallen in the center, the uh, right trench here is going to be taking a lot of fire from its rear. Luckily, its front is still pretty well covered by the soldiers here in this trench. Machine gun bunker still very much active, opening up. So the firm point here on the right side is doing very well, especially since they destroyed the two half-track teams that moved in. Uh, good use of mortar fire there to cover the rest of the trench. So it looks like it'll be the center that will be coming under the most pressure here. So the first line has more or less fallen, and the German troops are moving up to seize the trench, at least from one direction. Um... It's going to turn into some pretty nasty close quarter combat pretty soon. Trench clearing. Lots of hand grenades will probably be thrown. Lots of point blanking and stressful shooting, so it'll really matter. This is where the MP40 can come in and shine a little bit more than the Lee Enfield, so to speak. But at range, the Lee Enfields are definitely holding back the, the German K98s and MP40s with their um, 
with their superior magazine capacity and better rate of fire, I suppose. And the MP40 at range isn't gonna match the Lee Enfield at range, absolutely not. So a few casualties back here in this line, the man has been shot in the head, which has turned into a very big puddle of blood. Uh, that must have been a lucky, lucky shot from back there. It's very unlikely that these men would be taking casualties from, from all the way back there. Officer still with the binoculars out, scouting out targets. Wow, it's this this uh, right section of the left section, so to speak. This far most right position. Oh, and this officer has skipped the binoculars. He did pick up his Webley for a second. Has he spotted a vehicle coming down back there? Can he hear something? It's out with the Webley again. Binoculars are not gonna get him any kills. Oh, he's down. German BTR coming in. They might have missed one of the gun crews. It looks like they've missed him. They're going in for... Holy shit. Oh, he was just about to turn the gun to attack the BT. I say BTR and people will be like, what the fuck? That's not a BTR. They're called BTR in the game and I've played this game for so many thousands of hours that it's kind of etched into my head that as soon as I see a, a half track like this one here, I'll say BTR because it falls under the BTR category in-game. And I, I think I've explained that before. But one would probably rather say APC, Armored Personnel Carrier. Um, um, which I, which is what I don't I don't believe they used the word at the time. At the time it was simply half-track. You know, the, the, the Americans had half-tracks, the Germans had half-tracks, etc. But this trenches position is starting to get pretty cleared out now, and some MG39 support here on the half track is moving in for the more rear trenches. This line is still holding. This is a very nice photorealistic map. It really makes for if you make a realistic map, you'll have realistic combat. And this kind of slow pace and long range firefights is really, really making this feel pretty extra cool right now. Yeah, so better rate of fire here with the Lee Enfield than the K98, seeing as it can hold twice the amount of rounds. Wow, so you can get off way many more rounds a minute than a K98. That is definitely working in their favor now. Is this machine gun position still holding? Yes. I do believe we're looking at zero casualties here on the strong point, too. I wonder if the mortar has run out of ammunition. It's likely. It's more than likely, actually, so we're going to take these guys out and we're going to get them into a trench where they can hold or where they stand a better chance at holding. We'll send them to two different positions like that just to cover the left flank now, seeing as they're starting to lose the center. We'll see if the Brits choose to pull back soon. It's likely. Uh, they're, they, they are on free move. Um... And they have the order to not advance, which means they have the order to, to pull back if needed. Uh, and if they feel too much pressure, we, we're likely to see that. I do see some movement here. Yes, they're pulling back now. The left flank is falling. Soldiers are pulling back. MG39 rips off a burst, but none have been caught in the fire. And this is an, a battle to represent the brutal battles that did go on on the outskirts before you got to the beaches where, where uh, the Germans chose to bombard and leave their land forces not like sort of blitzkrieging them but you know constantly harassing the enemy and of course they were battling um, more inlands not on the actual beach itself although I do believe that there was obviously an exchange of fire and whatnot that that's a that's a certainty um, oh But the Germans chose to go with a more safe approach, and besides, slaughtering 300,000 British soldiers isn't very good if you're going to try and ensue for peace afterwards. Um, 
Well, not sue for peace, but negotiate peace. So, just keeping a constant pressure on them with some air raids and whatnot was probably the safer safer option at the time. Especially since you were more or less you needing using your land units to battle uh, French units still in the area and whatnot. Oh, someone's jammed. Come on, fix it. Fix that jam, soldier. Get back firing! Soldier! Still fixing it. I wonder what's wrong. What did he do? He needs to reload, of course. Get the new mag in. Stand up and fire. This man has probably never seen battle combat before. Oh. Did jam again. Ice pull him back. Yeah. So part of the mortar crew probably hasn't seen any action pre previously, other than been firing mortars. And I think they're starting to empty out the trench now. The British retreat is becoming more and more apparent. As Germans are bringing, getting closer and closer to the goal. This is very nice stuff. This is very good to see. They're going to be running here to the... the uh, this is the west. Southwest here. Or northwest, seeing as the beaches are to the north, not the south. Uh, the Germans are more attacking from the south and east in this current situation. So, running northwest is it's a good idea. Yes, a good idea indeed. Oh. We'll look at casualties later, of course, as well, to get a good idea of what's happened. Right now, they're going to be clearing out this trench. And the British soldiers will be retreating back here to the triage center that has avoided battle previously. Some ammo depot as well. Lots of equipment was left indeed. And now they're going to start pulling back. A few grenades will be thrown just to cover the retreat. That was actually a German grenade. While they uh, battle on there as the Brits retreat. Let's take a look at casualties. German casualties will be marked in red. British casualties will be marked in yellow as you can tell. This battle has been vastly greater and larger and more casualty filled than one could expect. But we so we see some clear lines here of the defenders and attackers and in their patterns. A lot of Germans have fallen here in the grass today. We're looking at uh, at least as many as the Brits and most likely a good a good 50% more. And here's the BTR section that was absolutely slaughtered by mortars. Good stuff to see. The Brits will be retreating to the Bray Dunes to join up the rest of the defenders. We're going to have ourselves part two coming up very soon. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys soon again. Ciao.